Welcome back everyone. Physiologic anemia of infants is my today's lesson. At birth, normal full term infants have higher hemoglobin levels and the larger red blood cells than do older children and adults. This is because during the intrauterine period, erythropoiesis is everywhere in every bone marrow, whereas later it becomes confined to more flat bones. So at birth, neonates have higher number of hemoglobin and the red blood cell mass than older children and adults. However, within the first week of life, a progressive decline in hemoglobin level begins and then persists for 6 to 8 weeks. This resulting anemia is known as the physiologic anemia of infancy. With the onset of respiration at birth, considerably more oxygen becomes available for binding to hemoglobin and as a result, the hemoglobin oxygen saturation increases from 50 to 95% or more. Uh, there is also gradual, normal developmental switch from fetal to adult hemoglobin synthesis after birth that results in the replacement of high oxygen affinity fetal hemoglobin with lower oxygen affinity adult hemoglobin, which is capable of delivering more oxygen to the tissue. Uh, the increase in blood oxygen content and the delivery results in down regulation of erythropoietin production, leading to suppression of erythropoiesis. Because there is no erythropoiesis, Aged red blood cells that are removed from the circulation are not replaced and the hemoglobin level decreases. The hemoglobin concentration continues to decline until tissue oxygen needs becomes greater than oxygen delivery. Normally, this point is reached between 8 to 12 weeks of age when the hemoglobin concentration is about 11 gram per dl. In healthy term infantes, the NAD rarely falls below 10 gram per dl and at this time, erythropoietin production increases and erythropoiesis resumes. The supply of stored reticulondotelial iron derived from previously degraded red blood cells remains sufficient for this renewed hemoglobin synthesis even in the absence of dietary iron intake until around 5 months of age. In all this, anemia should be viewed as a physiologic adaptation to extraterrestrial life reflecting the excess oxygen delivery relative to tissue oxygen requirement. Uh, there is no hem hematologic problem, no therapy is required, unless physiologic anemia of infancy is exacerbated by other ongoing processes. Uh, premature infants also develop a physiologic anemia, known as physiologic anemia of prematurity, but the hemoglobin decline is both more extreme and more rapid in premature babies than term babies. Hemoglobin levels of 7 to 9 grams per year usually are reached by 3 to 6 weeks of age and the level might be even lower in very small premature infants. Uh, the same physiologic factors play a role in term infants are operative in preterm infants, but this is more exaggerated in preterm babies. Uh, in premature infants, the physiologic hemoglobin decline might be intensified by blood loss from repeated phlebotomies obtained to monitor ill neonates because preterms are most of the time admitted to neonatal intensive case unit, uh, we need a repeated phlebotomy for different reasons. So this is uh, this exaggerates or intensifies the physiologic uh, anemia of prematurity. Demands on erythropoiesis are further heightened by the premature infants, and the presumed shortened RBC lifespan, which is 40 to 60 days in premature babies, and the accelerated expansion of RBC mass that accompanies the premature baby's rapid rate of growth all predisposed to uh, physiologic anemia of prematurity. Nonetheless, plasma erythropoietin levels are lower than would be expected for the degree of anemia, resulting in a suboptimal erythropoietic responses. But the reason for diminished erythropoietin level is not fully understood in preterm babies. During fetal life, erythropoietin synthesis is handled primarily by the liver, and the liver's oxygen sensor is relatively insensitive to hypoxia compared to that of the kidney. The developmental switch from liver to kidney erythropoietin production is not accelerated by early births, and thus, the term infants must rely on the liver as the primary site for synthesis, leading to diminished responsiveness to anemia. An additional mechanism thought to contribute to diminished erythropoietin levels might be accelerated erythropoietin metabolism. Because the pronounced decline in hemoglobin that occurs in many very low birth weight infants might be associated with abnormal clinical signs. This anemia of prematurity is not considered benign and usually requires transfusion with uh, blood when symptomatic. So, uh, anemia, physiologic anemia of 
infancy intern babies and then preterm babies are considered as a separate problem because anemia uh, physiological anemia of prematurity in preterm babies might need uh, treatment with blood transfusion some dietary factors such as folic acid deficiency can aggravate physiologic anemia and unless there has significant blood loss iron stores should be sufficient to maintain erythropoiesis during the first few months of life vitamin e deficiency uh, it does not play a role in anemia of prematurity uh, some considers as if vitamin a deficiency plays a major role in anemia of prematurity but this is not the right breast milk and infant formulas provide adequate vitamin e so uh, there is no vitamin E deficiency if the baby is getting uh, breast milk. Regarding the treatment of physiologic anemia of prematurity, in the full term infant, physiologic anemia requires no therapy beyond ensuring that the infant's diet contains essential nutrients for normal hematopoiesis. In premature infants, an optimal hemoglobin has not been established and it is usually dictated by the infant's overall clinical condition. Transfusion might be needed to maintain the hemoglobin at which it is considered safe for that child. Premature infants who are feeding well, growing normally, uh, rarely need transfusion unless iatrogenic blood loss has been significant. Also, factors such as poor weight gain, respiratory difficulties, and abnormal hair rate have prompted transfusion. The beneficial effect has not been documented. Uh, in premature babies, late exposure to packed RBC might uh, cause development of necrotizing enterocolitis and early transfusion might be associated with the risk of intraventricular hemorrhage. So we should have to be cautious when we give blood for premature babies. Uh, when transfusions are necessary, an RBC volume of 10 to 15 ml per kg is recommended and it is good practice to split units derived from a single donor so that sequential transfusion can be given as required and the donor exposure minimized. In early preterm infants, uh, especially those who weigh less than 1.25 kg. The half-life of transfused RBC is about 30 days. So delayed cord clamping or umbilical cord milking at birth results in fewer transfusion and the reduction in both intraventricular hemorrhage and necrotizing enterocolites in preterm infants. Uh, because premature infants are known to have low plasma erythropoietin levels, recombinant human erythropoietin might be an alternative to transfusion for the prevention or treatment of symptomatic anemia of prematurity. Uh, iron supplementation should be given if we are giving recombinant human erythropoietin level for premature babies uh, to optimize its effect. The current approach to anemia of prematurity is to limit phlebotomies and to limit donor exposure. Iron therapy is indicated for all neonates with anemia of prematurity starting at one month of age and continuing until about one year with starting dose of 1 to 2 mg per kg per day of elemental dairy. Uh, this is all what I have for uh, physiologic anemia of infancy. So overall, physiologic anemia of infancy is a benign problem and uh, it doesn't need treatment for term babies. But for preterm babies, it is something different. So you should have to manage them case by case. Thank you for your attention.